Come on. Silk touch. Silk touch. Silk touch. Oh. It's a pretty good book. But no silk touch. Hey, my name's Shohi, and welcome back to Minecraft World Building, where we're building a world with lore. If you enjoy Minecraft and lore, consider subscribing. Do it for the fairies. In the last episode, I built this cozy fishing village, and I've been on the hunt for some enchanted books, but haven't had too much luck. So instead of trying to fish for them all, I think it's about time we get ourselves an enchanting setup. I've been repping the iron armor for quite a while now, and I've almost ran out of iron at this point, so I'm really quite broke. This last build was pretty big, so we're gonna go smaller scale again for our next build. So let's go build ourselves a library. Yeah, you heard that correctly, library. Sorry for getting your space there. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I was just a wee lad, I would say library, and my siblings would make fun of me. Well, who's laughing now? Because it's actually a library, not a library. Silly siblings, am I right? Before I get too distracted, though, I've been fishing a tiny bit, and I just wanted to show y'all what I've got. Oh, here comes one. Just a fish. But here we have our little fishing chest. There's really not too much going on. Got a bunch of fish. Some, I actually got a pretty good uh, bow there. I also got this fishing rod and this fishing rod and a bunch of junk. Finally got a saddle and a name tag and some books, but the books are, I mean, these two are not too bad. I got efficiency five on that one. And on breaking three is pretty good. So we're back in our fairy city. By the way, if you have any name ideas for this place, feel free to leave a suggestion. It's one of the few fairy cities in the Sylvan Wilds that houses multiple fairy clans, so go wild. Now, don't get your hopes up on seeing a bunch of fairy cities, because I have other races to look at, and building all these cities can be quite time consuming. It's kind of like the Empire's SMP, but I'm the whole SMP. So one of the reasons we're building this library is because we also need a place to house our lore book. My storage organization is uh, subpar, so I keep losing track of it. Anyways, here's some lore. Wood magic, also known as Arboromancy, is one of the five elements passed down from the Celestials. The Entios or fairies were vitalized with the element of wood, granting them the power to control and manipulate plant life. Now I've had some questions about lore and just know that whatever goes into the lore book is always subject to change. It's one of the beauties of a world building project because you can kind of add or remove things that don't fit in your world as it develops. Before I had decided to make this world building project in Minecraft, it was actually somewhat of a grimdark project. Now, that's not necessarily saying that it won't have some of those elements in the future, but I'd say Grimdark and Minecraft don't necessarily mesh that well, so I have to tone back the Grimdark aspects a bit to fit it into Minecraft. So before we get to building and discussing the build, I do have to gather a very specific material, and when we filmed this boot barn episode here, we stumbled upon a lovely tool to help us gather it. This beautiful golden axe with silk touch to it. Since it's a golden axe, it doesn't have many uses, but hopefully it's enough to gather what I need. I was about to head towards the dark forest, which is quite far away, but I remembered I can actually bone meal these little suckers and save ourselves a little trip. So let's just go to my skeleton farm to grab some bone meal and we'll bone meal this up and collect some of the red mushroom block Sir. oh this is uh this is rob oh rob kind of came and tried to rob me and Sir. he got stuck in that oh. he's very violent so we just kind of make our way down these tunnels i still have to come back here and decorate it later because i was calling it an amethyst mine uh, with the, one of the lore episodes, but you know, I don't have Silk Touch except for this axe and Once I get Silk Touch on a pickaxe, I can add little amethyst to it. So we'll do that later but, Oh, I don't think I showed this but it's my little skeleton farm. It's 
not really pretty at all, but maybe we'll decorate it in the future. All right, so what you do is you place the red mushroom on the grass block. Uh, won't place. Like, guess I have to go in the dark, maybe? Aha, there you go. So we put the mushroom there. Uh, I'm hoping this is enough height right here. Come on. No. No. Well, that's a bummer. Ah, so what I had to do was you kind of put a mushroom underneath the tree, and then you got to chop down the tree. And then hopefully I can bone meal it and it'll actually turn into a mushroom. So let's try this one. Aha, there you go. So we're gonna just collect up this mushroom block right here. Hopefully, you know, it's... Oh man. <laughs> oh, this is, this ax is running out really quickly. Oh man. I'm not sure if this is gonna be enough. I might just have to make it work, but this silk touch literally just got 30 blocks and it's already about to die on me. Oh, and it's done. That's, that's disappointing. That's very disappointing. Uh, oh shoot. Uh, it's all good. I think hopefully this will be enough for what we're doing. All right, so I cleared out some space on the eastern side of the city as it's pretty barren compared to the western side. So for this build, I went through a few iterations of it and I couldn't really get something I absolutely love simply because living in a berry might be a little weird even for berries. But if a smurf can live in a mushroom, I think it's not too far-fetched for a fairy to live in a berry. Hey, that rhymed. Uh, but I think the final product is still pretty cute, so I figured, why not? So, let's just get into building it then, shall we? So this is the library, your one-stop shop for fairy history and lore. This one's a little more cartoony than the other builds I feel, but like I said, if we can live in mushrooms, why not fruits? Personally, I think it's pretty cute. So we mentioned in the lore book that fairies practice arboromancy, name subject to change in case y'all riot, making them arboromancers. We basically just took the word arborist and slapped on the suffix mancer, and bam we got ourselves some wood wizards. Anyways, here we have the library. We used a palette of lime wool, red blocks, and birch items. I was originally using moss for the leaves here, but they were blending in too much with the grass, so I opted for a much brighter color. I have yet to get lime dye since I need a coral reef, so lime wool is what we got stuck with. Otherwise, I would have used some lime concrete or lime concrete powder in order to break up the uh, texture of the lime wool. The strawberry itself, we're using red wool, red concrete, red concrete powder, and uh, these red mushroom blocks. And for the trim, we used a bunch of birch. This is oak here, and we used uh, birch buttons to mimic the seeds. Now let's just take a peek inside. Wow. I feel like it's pretty darn cozy in here. So basically for the flooring, we used spruce, uh, spruce wood, spruce planks, and we got a little sofa here with some bamboo. You can read up on your favorite fairy authors like William Facefear and J.K. Fairling. 
I would have made a cozier enchanting setup here, but Minecraft makes you do this kind of ugly square shape uh, to make the enchanting table work. So this is what we're stuck with. And here, we've got a bunch of uh, glow berries just to add some lighting. Got a little desk here that's missing a chair, but that's okay, we'll get that later. And yeah, it is, um, I would have, I, I wish I could add some diversity to the bookshelves right here, but you know, we really need all the bookshelves. We need 15 bookshelves in order to get a full enchanting setup. And here we have the upper deck. We got another desk here where the fairies can kind of study up. And we're missing a few, uh, we're missing a few bookshelves here just because I ran out of paper and I don't have proper farm for any of that stuff. So missing a lot of material. So have you ever bit into a fruit and been like, wow, this skin is very, very tough. Well, I imagine that's what fairies are doing to make organic objects into homes. In real life, during times of drought, certain fruit will develop thicker skin in order to protect the water contents inside of the fruit. So let's just say one of the abilities of an arboromancer is barkification, name also subject to change, where arboromancers can create a tough external outer layer that uh, gives them these kind of walls here that we're looking at. You can imagine during fights, fairies can cover themselves in a layer of bark type armor. I actually have a pretty cool build idea with this that I'm planning for a later episode, so more on that later. Now that we've got our enchantments set up, I think it's time we give this bad boy a whirl. I killed some skeletons in my skeleton farm, so we've got some levels to enchant with. And here we got our trusty diamond pickaxe in a dream. So honestly, either Silk Touch or Fortune would be good for me. I'm breaking. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Oh. Just unbreaking. Uh, that, that is very disappointing. Um, that's okay. All right, we got ourselves a few more levels. Hi, Rob. How's it going? Don't shoot me. We got ourselves a few more levels from the skeleton farm that's right around here. Uh, I'm actually not going to the skeleton farm right now. I need to go to the mines because I did find myself some diamond ore a long time ago that I was saving in case I got fortune. Um, of course, this little pickaxe here, we only got unbreaking. So I kind of don't want to end it off with, you know, such a lame enchantment. So we're gonna take a peek and see if we can get a better one. And if not, that's fine too. Uh, where do I go? Yeah, my mind here is very, very uh, weird. I'm just like kind of zigzagging around. But there's a method to my madness, kind of. I think it's here, yep. There we go, I'll like a strip mine down there. We gotta go all the way down to get to that uh, deep slate level where where you can kind of get stuff. Where did uh think this way? Yep, I place these torches so that I can kind of see where they are hiding. But here I found a four vein and I didn't mine it because I was hoping for some fortune. I don't have fortune, so we're just gonna mine three more pieces. I'll save you just in case I get fortune. I do think have a, I, I do believe I have another uh, group of diamonds just sitting around, but I just want another three to get a second pickaxe, and then we'll see uh, what we get. So we only mined three of our diamond ore that were just sitting around, just because I want to save the other ones in case I do manage to get myself some fortune. Sorry, I was getting uh, I'm kind of lost in my own mind here because I don't really I don't really lay it out that well. But if we don't manage to get any nice enchantment for this next pickaxe, uh, we'll probably just disenchant these two that we have and re-enchant them. That way we're not just wasting all of our diamonds. We're back at our library. 
Where's the? All right, let's see what we got. Don't don't look at my my inventory. It's very very messy. Uh, let's try again one more time. See what we got. Uh, I'm breaking again. Oh my! All right, I got bad luck. But uh, let's see. I do. I did bring a grindstone. Let's see. We're uh, up there. Uh, knock that one out. Does it? Does it give you the same enchantments, or does it like reset it? Oh yeah, fortune. That's what we wanted. So it's really not a bad pickaxe. Got efficiency three and fortune two. I actually wanted silk touch over fortune. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, just for my building needs, but Fortune 2 is great. We can finally go mine the rest of my diamonds. I still need to do some uh, exterior decorating here, some terraforming specifically. Uh, I also probably try to get some more enchantments in between episodes, but that's all the time we have for this episode. At the time of recording this video, I just hit 1,000 subscribers, which is absolutely nuts since I was just at 103 weeks ago. But thank you for all the love and support. I really appreciate all of you subscribing. This started out as a creative outlet and has now become so much more. So please do subscribe and leave a like and a comment about your thoughts. I really do enjoy reading all your thoughts and ideas. Thanks for watching. Bye bye now.